I've never seen that kind of sentiment on a Hallmark card. I love you so much, I just want to dump your body off a bridge. Nope, can't see that campaign catching on. Hey guys, and welcome back to another creepy text chat story. Today we're back on the app Hooked, and we are continuing the story of the unknown caller. If you haven't watched part one, link is in the description, and I suggest you go and watch that first. Let's get into it. What are you going to do to me? Please, I haven't done anything to you. Open the door. Please, I'll do anything. Now, and stop whimpering. I can hear you through the door. It's pathetic. Kelly's trembling hand fumbles with the chain a few times before she can unlock the door and open it. When she does, the porch is empty. Look down. Where did you go? Oh, do you really miss me already? How sweet. I can come back if you'd like. No, don't. I don't know how you found me, but please, I'm begging you to to leave. I won't even call the cops. Lol, 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 lol. Are you actually this stupid? My stomach hurts from laughing. I'm dying. No, wait. That was Violet. Just leave me alone. Two years ago. Look down. I left you a little Halloween present on the welcome mat. What's in the plastic bag? Poison? Now you're just being ridiculous. Not to mention rude. Rude? You're the one stalking me and making me play a stupid game and I've given you a gift. It's the perfect costume for you. Take it inside and open it. Kelly acquiesces. Inside the bag is the same cat costume that she wore two years ago in the photograph. Stiff with Violet's blood. I even included the white wig. Although it's mostly red now with all that blood. How did you get this? Answer me. Who are you? Oh good, you like it. I was so scared you wouldn't. I threw this away. One man's trash? Put it on. If you're going to do something to me, just do it. Stop dragging it out. You're not the one in charge tonight. Stop crying and put it on. Don't make me ask again. Kelly puts on the cat costume over her pajamas. It's on. Don't lie. I'm not. How long do I have to wear it? I don't know yet. First things first, I want you to meow for me. We don't want to limit our fun. This isn't fun, you psychopath. How does it feel? Only, it looks like you've gained a little weight since that night. Stress eating, perhaps? It still fits. I need more details than that. Paint me a picture or I'll come and see it for myself. The fabric is stiff. Stiff from her blood. Say it. The fabric is stiff from her blood. Blood you spilt. Clothes you threw in the trash behind your dorm. You couldn't know this unless you were there that night. You saw me throw them away. That's how you know all this. Now you're getting somewhere. Why didn't you say something then? My turn. How does it feel wearing those clothes again? I just answered that. No, that was about the clothes themselves. I want to know how it feels emotionally to wear the clothes that you killed Violet in. How the hell am I supposed to answer that? Truthfully, dig deep. Let's get emotional. We're in this together now. I hate this. Do not make me ask again. I feel really close to you right now. Please stop it. I feel sick even thinking about that night. You're not trying to get a sympathy vote, are you? The idea of anyone feeling bad for you after what you've done. No, I feel awful for what happened. How the night started out so good and ended. Ended on a bridge. How? You know I like stories. We had an argument and she got out of the car. She said she'd rather walk home. Yes, and so you followed her and hit her with your car. My life ended that night too, you know. You got away with murder. You think I got away with anything? I still have nightmares about the sound she made hitting the water. Good. I hope your conscience has tortured you for the things you did that night. I didn't mean to. I only meant to scare her. I swear to God, I only meant to scare her. How? I was going to rush at her. I don't know. I just wanted her to get back in the car so we could go home. I only meant to rev the engine. But I'd had too much to drink and my foot slipped off the brake. And the car jerked forward so fast and I hit her. I stopped the car and I got out. I saw her half hanging off the bridge. It was blood everywhere. I checked for a pulse and I couldn't feel anything. And then I panicked and pushed her off the bridge into the water. I know that part. I'm not interested in the what, but you asked. This isn't a therapy session where we talk about you and your feelings. I want you to dive into how it would have felt for her, not physically, emotionally. I don't 
understand. How would Violet have felt to know that you hated her? I didn't hate her. You killed her. You said it yourself. You were jealous of her. Everyone loved her. And you couldn't handle that, so you killed her. Yeah, everyone loved her, but I loved her too. It was an accident. Oh, really? You accidentally covered up your crime though. I've never seen that kind of sentiment on a Hallmark card. I love you so much, I just want to dump your body off a bridge. Nope, can't see that campaign catching on. This has gone on long enough. She tears the cat costume off and stuffs it back into the bag. I don't want to play this anymore. I am not playing your twisted little game anymore. Playing? You still think this was a game? This was never a game to me. And if you really think that, maybe you're too stupid to live. The world would be better without you, Kelly. I'm pretty sure we both know that. A heavy thumping comes from upstairs. What is that? Is that you? Are you in my house? Maybe it's the beating of your telltale heart. The footsteps move towards the stairs. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. If you had been sorry, you'd have gotten help that night. You'd have given her family something to bury. You'd have given her closure instead of giving Violet's body to the river. I panicked. You left her. I wanted to go back and find her. But you didn't. You did nothing. That's not true. How long has it been? Two years. Two years. You never cared about her. I did. She was the one person I could be myself with. Believe whatever the hell you want, but don't you dare say I didn't love my roommate. It was an accident. Maybe you felt bad. I did, I do. Maybe it was an accident. It was. And yet, you've done nothing since then. Nothing to make it right. You moved away and thought you got away with it. I'm sorry. I made the worst mistake of my life, but I can't take it back. I would if I could. Violet's gone. Nothing you do to me could be worse than that. Turn around, face the window. I promise if you leave, you'll do nothing. Kelly hears heavy steps descending the stairs. Don't turn around. Not until I say so. There will be consequences. I won't, I won't look at you at all. You can just leave, I won't say anything to anyone. I know you won't. I haven't even seen your face or anything, you were wearing a mask. It's not too late to stop this. I've been lenient tonight when you broke rules. You've already gotten away with murder, pun intended. I've been watching you, you know, for a while. Why? I wanted to see what you'd done with the life you thought was so important. Well, more important than justice for Violet. No one would want to rot in a cell. No one would want to rot in a river. Anyways, I've been observing you, seeing what you've been up to. And what have you learnt? That some people waste their lives. You think I'm wasting mine? You're a void. You took Violet's life, so you should be living for two people. And yet your existence is shriveled and meaningless. As best I can see. I try to be a good person and not to hurt anyone. Most people do that anyway. And they don't have a skeleton in their closet. But I'll come and give you a nice big pat on the back if you'd like. No, that's not what I'm saying. What are you saying? I'd like you to tell me why your life isn't worthless. My life matters. It doesn't. Try again. I have a family. A family that you never see. Violet also had a family. What can you do to make this world a better place? I don't know. Well, I'll give you a minute to come up with something. I know this is a stressful situation. What? Do you want me to beg for my life? Is that it? An interesting idea. For sure. You never gave Violet that chance. It was an accident. So you said. And maybe I believe you. Maybe. But your life since then has been meaningless. Have you turned things around? Use the tragedy to become a better person. Wait, wait, let me think. For a while I thought there had been a reason for it all, to have gone down the way it did. Do you believe in fate? I don't know what you want me to say. Calm down, you're getting hysterical. For the longest time, I wondered if that night was a catalyst for something bigger than you or Violet. That the universe had made something happen. But sadly, you've done nothing to prove my theory. Why wait all this time if you knew all along? Why confront me now and not a week ago, a month, a year? Why wait if you knew where I've been this whole time? Why now? Maybe your uselessness disproved my theory. So it was time to step in. Why wait? Maybe I wanted you to think you'd gotten away with it. Why? So I could see the look on your face when I tore your life apart. The same way you tore mine apart. The footsteps come closer as the two continue texting. Until the unknown caller stops only a few feet behind Kelly and begins whispering. I looked for you for months. I've been watching you for over a year. Why? Deciding what justice would look like. I wanted to punish you on the anniversary of the Halloween night. The night you 
you showed your true evil colours. Please, leave me alone. What if I told you you didn't get away with murder? Maybe you only got away with attempted murder. What? Don't turn around. What do you mean? Think about it. How could I know everything about that night? Maybe there was a reason they never found Violet's body. Maybe you only knocked her out when you hit her with your car, but you were too panicked to realise she wasn't dead. But there was so much blood and I couldn't find a pulse. My hands were shaking so bad. But maybe the shock of the cold water in the river woke her up. Are you? What are you saying? Do not turn around. Please, what you're saying is impossible, isn't it? Would you feel better or worse if you'd actually killed me? If I, oh my gosh, it can't be you. How would you feel if you knew I was still alive? Happy. Don't turn around. Do not turn around. Please, what you're saying is, it's impossible, isn't it? Would you feel better or worse if you'd known you'd actually killed me? If I, oh my, it can't be you. Maybe your sniveling has made me think you'll suffer more if I let you live. Death would be an escape, but you can't escape fate. It's time, Kelly. No. Please, no, maybe I deserve to die, but please don't, I'll do anything you want. I want you to turn around. I came here for answers, and maybe a pound of flesh. I'll know what to do when I look in your eyes. Kelly turns around. Standing there is Violet with a very large knife. Violet looks into Kelly's eyes, and then she plunges the knife into Kelly's chest. Kelly falls to the ground, and then Violet picks up Kelly's cat costume and walks off into the night. Ooh! That was a serious story of revenge. Anyway, guys, I really hope you have enjoyed this creepy story. If you did and you've made it this far, make sure to write the word cat down below in the comment section. It lets me know you've watched the videos and it makes me happy. Leave a like if you did enjoy it too. That helps me out. Hope you're all having a wonderful day and I will see you guys in the next one.